topic is integrating anti-bribery and corruption analytics into your internal auditor compliance program. And because of the significant uptick in FCPA investigations among today's global corporations, the audit committee is asking internal audit to, you know, how are we addressing our risks around bribery and corruption? Um, teaming with compliance and general counsel, a lot of companies are looking to their internal audit to start doing more testing around corruption and bribery. And that's been a challenge for some companies because their typical internal audit work plan has been more of the SOX testing, the financial misstatement type tests, or the asset misappropriation test, if you think about the fraud tree. Corruption has been left typically to outside counsel or even in-house counsel to develop the policies and controls. But what's happening is there's, being a, there's been a lack of monitoring within those companies. And that's where internal audit is really being asked to fill those voids. I'll be presenting on best practices in integrating anti-bribery and corruption analytics into your compliance program. Specifically, it's addressing the risk that we're seeing with companies around FCPA, with the UK Bribery Act coming out, um, and just so much regulation and enforcement in this area and the fines that we're reading in the newspapers. It's really been an important subject for internal auditors now. So what's happened is we've seen because of the press, you know, the, the settlement agreements and things we read in the paper and the enforcement actions, the audit committees of today's you know, global corporations are asking, what are we doing around bribery and corruption, specifically FCPA and the UK Bribery Act, etc. What's happened was corruption was typically owned by the legal department or the compliance department. Set up the policies and procedures, make sure the contract language reads correctly. The, you know, the attorney type things, but what was lacking was the monitoring element of those policies and procedures that set up. And that's what internal audits designed to do. So companies are rushing to develop those types of analytics to monitor for corruption. The challenge is, and this is what I'll be talking about in the presentation, is the mindset of financial misstatement and asset misappropriation type fraud schemes aren't so effective in developing tests around corruption. Tests like looking for suspicious terms in the T&E descriptions or donations in charity. It might be small, in, but they, they might be for donations to a, to a government official or some political campaign or some, you know, some program that's unique to a government official such that they win the contract. Um, free goods, giving away free goods to vendors that might be politically exposed or government people. There's a lot of new tests now that don't fall in the traditional financial statement or asset misappropriation type tests that are unique to corruption and addressing the risks of FCPA, which is now becoming more of an expectation of the Department of Justice and the SEC as, in, as opposed to just, hey, you should be doing something. Um, and you see this mainly becoming, coming out of the settlement agreements from major corporations that internal audits expected to be looking at this. The framework that I'll be discussing follows the five key components of what the DOJ looks for in an FCPA violation. We'll be discussing analytics around the who. Who's making the payment? You know, agents, employees, uh, distributors, um, you know, third party, third party event, you know, third party acting on your behalf essentially. Looking, the other component is corrupt intent. What's the corrupt intent of the individual? Looking at the payments, payment streams. With FCPA, it's even the intent to pay. It doesn't even actually have to get paid. The fourth component is the recipient. Who's getting paid? Who's ultimately getting it? Is it, an, is it a government official? The UK Bribery Act even expands it more broadly just to include just corruption in general. It can be business trade. The last component is business purpose. Is it for a specific business purpose? So those five components, who, corrupt intent, payment, recipient, and business purpose is a very, what we're finding is a very effective way for integrating anti-bribery and corruption analytics into your program by designing specific tests to meet those criteria.